absolute gorgeous Sunday. So thankful y'all joining with us today, joining with us online. God is up to something, and it's going to be a great, great day. I want to read out of John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17, the Message Bible. God's Word says, I've loved you the way my Father has loved me. Make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done, kept my Father's commands and made myself at home in his love. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy and your joy wholly mature. This is my command. Love one another the way I've loved you. This is the very best way to love. <laughs> Put your life on the line for your friends. You are my friends when you do the things I command you. No longer call you servants because servants don't understand what their master is thinking and planning. No, I am named you friends because I let you in on everything I've heard from my father. You didn't choose me, remember? I chose you to put you in the world to bear fruit, a fruit that doesn't spoil. As fruit bearers, whatever you ask the Father in relation to me, he gives you. Remember the root command, love one another. Josh Baldwin sings a song, Stand in Your Love. Uh, when darkness tries to roll over my bones, when sorrow comes to steal my joy, I own when brokenness is pain and all I know, I won't be shaken. Shame no longer has a place to hide and I'm not captive to the lies. I'm not afraid to leave my past behind. Oh, I won't be shaken. There's power that can break every chain. There's power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in his name. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do with us in this place tonight. God, we're here for you because of you. And I ask you now that you move in this service, touching hearts and lives, and we leave this place better than we came. For it's all about you, and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Beverly. Stand tonight. Praise and worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I can lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Start it over. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Jehovah Jireh, you're my provider. Jehovah Nisi, oh Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah Shalom, you're my Prince of Peace, and I worship you because of who you are. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh. Oh, my provider, Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah. 
Jehovah Shalom You're my Prince of Peace And I worship you Because of who you are Because of who you are I give you glory Because of who you are I give you praise Because of who you are I will lift my voice and say Lord, I worship you Because of who you are Jehovah Jireh You're my provider Jehovah Nisi, oh Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah Shalom, you're my Prince of Peace, and I worship you because of who you are, and I worship you because of who and I worship you because of who you are. Hallelujah. Is he your provider? And your Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. He reigns in victory. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Oh, I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Oh, I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Thank you, Father. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like the fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, run through the shadows, burn light. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. 
let's sing that again. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Oh, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Oh, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Addiction and depression, Father. Lord, anxiety. Thank you, Father. Fear, Lord, is gone in the name of Jesus. Praise you, Father, for your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every stronghold has to bow at the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That gets me excited. <laughs> Hallelujah. I search the world. But it couldn't fill me Oh, man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough Then you came along And put me back together And every is now satisfied here in your love oh there's nothing better than you Lord there's nothing better than you Lord there's nothing nothing To show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend, hallelujah, cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. Your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Oh, there's nothing. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. 
You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bonds into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that there's nothing, nothing better than you. Praise you, Father. Thank you for finding me, Father. Hallelujah. In my sin. Thank you, Father, that you pulled me out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. That you turned my life around. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Once you get a real taste of Jesus, nothing else on this earth satisfies. Amen. There's nothing, nothing better than the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Well, we are so blessed to serve a living God who's a loving God. Amen. And he wants to hear our, our prayers and our needs. He has all power. He has all authority. He has all the ability. Praise the Lord. And uh, you've come to the right place. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. Well, let's, uh, let's lift these needs before the Lord. And uh, amen. Let's pray. Lord God, we, uh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. There is absolutely nothing better than you. Lord, uh, Satan may try to tempt us. Lord, the world may try to allure us. But Lord God, nothing, nothing satisfies like you, Jesus. Nothing is better than you. Lord, we love you, God. We are so blessed to have your love, to have your grace. Lord, as a, the word said in the song, you know all our weaknesses and flaws, but God, you love us. You give us grace. Thank you, Jesus, that you're our high priest, Lord, that you're always interceding for us, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And God, thank you for ripping that veil in two, Lord, and giving us free access into the Holy of Holies. And Lord, we lift up Fred before you. And God, thank you, Lord, for victory. He passed that stone. Lord, we give you praise for that, Lord. Thank you. He's doing well. Continue to bless him and minister to him, God. Lord, we continue to lift up our sister Sharon Taylor before you and pray, God, for a healing for that knee. And uh, Lord, uh, the medicine that's given her trouble, we pray that you'll give her grace and help her with that. Lord, we lift up uh, Tamara Glenn recovering from COVID and pray, Lord, that you'll strengthen her, that you'll bless her. Lord, your word says that you restore what the canker worm and the locust destroys. And God, we pray that you would restore her health completely, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, bless and encourage Donna, Lord. And uh, Lord, we uh, prayed for her, Lord. And and uh, we thank you, God, that you're the Lord that answers prayer. God, you said these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. And so, Lord, we thank you for healing right now. And Lord, we lift up uh, Lowell uh, 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 Lodgman or Logman, Lord. He has cancer. And uh, Lord God, I don't know his relationship with you, but Lord, we pray that Heavenly Father, Jesus would be so real to him that you would bless him with his, your presence. And uh, Lord, that he would know, Lord Jesus, that you are the God that heals him. And Lord, that he, you would touch him, that you would bless him, that you'd strengthen him, Father, in Jesus' name. And Lord God, we want to lift up Metropolis before you, Lord. And God, you have placed each and every person, Lord, where, where you want them to live, where you want them to be. And Lord, you chose for us to be here. And uh, so, Lord, we lift up Metropolis, God, and, and you know each and every person, every family. And uh, Lord, we pray that every hindrance of each person coming to know you would be 
taken out of the way. God, we pray that you'll work in their hearts, work in their minds, Lord, work in their situations, oh God. And, and, and Father, just bring them to be ripe uh, to, to receive Jesus. God, we pray for that, Lord. Give them an ear, Lord, to, to hear and to, to receive the gospel. We pray, Holy Spirit, do that wonderful work that only you can do. Lord, we lift up our missionaries before you, God, your missionaries, Lord, our brothers and sisters. And God, we thank you for them. We thank you for their faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for the call on their lives. And Lord, you've, you've called them and sent them all around the world because, Lord, you love people. And as the Apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God unto salvation to all who believe. So, Lord, bless our brothers and sisters. Lord, strengthen, encourage them, meet their every need. Lord, protect them from the evil one, bless them with health. And, Lord, we ask that you would extend your hand, Lord Jesus, to do signs and wonders that people would see, Lord God. Lord, we know, Jesus, when you were on this earth, even when people were seeing the miracles, even when Lazarus, Lord, you raised him from the dead, Lord, there's some people who still did not believe and they, they went and tattletailed on you to the Pharisees. And Lord, we know that God, there's those who won't believe even when they see signs and wonders. But Lord, there are many people who believe, God, because they do see them. And so Lord, glorify your name. Show yourself as the true and living God, the resurrection and the life, oh God, and, and save, save souls around this world. And we thank you, God, that is your will. And we thank you for that. Lord, we've come to meet with you. Lord, there's those uh, uh, meeting with us online. Lord, they couldn't be here. Lord, we've come to meet with you. And Lord, we pray, God, for your personal touch upon each and every person. Father, in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's continue to bless the Lord in our giving this, uh, this evening. And um, there's a offering plate here. There's an offering plate up back there. And uh, let's give as unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let's pray again. Lord, thank you, God, that you provide everything for us. Father, your, words, your word says that, God, the sunshine, even the rain. Lord, you provide it all. And God, uh, tonight, God, we give to you, Lord, because we love you, because we trust you. And I pray that you'll bless your people tonight as they give in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And you can, whoops, it's not on. But anyway, you can give online. You can go to Lighthouse and uh, on, uh, uh, online and give. But praise the Lord. I think the offering's over. <laughs> Are you waiting for the music to start? <laughs> okay, you can be seated. Did you pray on that? Oh, yeah. I already prayed. Sorry. Thank you, worship team. You did a great job. Beverly, appreciate you leading worship and Jay and Brad playing and uh, Sherman and Pat, they're on vacation and we want to lift them up in prayer and praise the Lord. Lord, bless them, help them not to get too much sunshine, right? <laughs> well, um, uh, Chuck and Wilma Lormis, uh, they told me to tell you hi, and uh, they are um, uh, home missionaries that we, we support, and also uh, Shannon and Becky, uh, let's see, Bowl, they, uh, they also say hi. And uh, if you uh, were not here this morning, um, we have... Um, Put together a booklet, our missionaries, and it has uh, all the missionaries and different ministries that we support in here. And so I encourage you to pick one of these up. And uh, there's some instructions what this booklet is for. It's to, to help you to, to pray for them. If you want to be in contact with them and encourage them, you could do that. Um, and uh, just be careful, though, there's a warning in here. Um, some of the missionaries are serving in uh, sensitive areas, and so don't be um, putting their pictures up or saying things up about them on Facebook. It can, it can uh, uh, cause some trouble. And, um, and also, uh, this morning, if you, haven't, if you hadn't heard the, this morning's message, you can uh, go back and watch it on Facebook or on YouTube and uh, talked about 
uh, the difference between uh, offerings and tithes. And we also gave uh, everyone an opportunity to prayerfully fill out a, a faith promise card. And uh, this is between uh, you and the Lord. And, uh, and it's saying, you know, you, yes, God wants us to use our mind, look at your finances, but also pray, Holy Spirit, what would you like me to commit to for a year, either giving weekly or monthly, to support our missionaries? And um, I know some people, they have a bad taste in their mouth about preachers uh, talking about money. But you know what? The Bible has a lot to say about money. Yeah. And a preacher wouldn't be a good preacher if he skipped that topic. And, uh, and so uh, uh, you know that uh, at Lighthouse, we don't uh, preach about money uh, every Sunday. We don't preach about it every month. <laughs> it's usually an annual thing. And so if you have a, an issue with preachers preaching about money, get over it, right? And uh, it's in the Bible. And so um, everything belongs to the Lord. And he tells us in his word that the, uh, uh, that the tithe belongs to him. That's one-tenth. And the offerings, that means God wants us to be open-hearted, to give over and above, and, uh, and to support different endeavors, uh, whether it's um, you know, a, a building project or uh, helping missionaries out. Whatever it might be, we need to be open. But if you haven't received a prayer booklet and a promise card, uh, you need to grab one before, uh, before you leave. And, uh, and if you're online and, and you would like one, just uh, text us or call us. We can get one to you. Um, also, uh, a few other uh, announcements. At 9.30 every Sunday morning, we uh, started a prayer meeting. And uh, it's our boiler room. And uh, its focus is uh, praying for God's presence and power and salvation and uh, we, we need the Lord, amen? And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, God, he, he likes to play a little hide-and-seek with us and because uh, he wants us to go after him, he wants us to never take him for granted. And, um, and so we need to pray and say, Lord, we need your presence, we need your power, we want you, amen? And uh, praise the Lord. Let's see, and there's, got that. Okay, and then uh, this, uh, one other announcement um, we did not announce this Sunday morning, but um, October 1st, it's two Sundays from now, uh, after the morning service on October 1st, we're going to end service, we're going to make sure that we're saying amen at 1130, and, uh, and we're going to have a, a church family meeting, and so if uh, Lighthouse is your home, uh, you're, you're uh, on the, the roll to vote uh, whatever it might be, um, you need to plan on being here at 1130. Uh, well, don't just show up 1130. <laughs> we'll take up another offering. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll, uh, you'll need to be here two Sundays from now, October 1st. We're going to have a, a special family meeting, so plan on being there. All right. Well, uh, with all that said, and I said a lot, <laughs> let's give a warm uh Appreciation for Pastor Keith as he Amen. comes and deliver the word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, I found out through my time of living for God, life isn't easy. There's bumps in the road, gullies, things happen, trials, troubles, tribulations. Life just isn't easy. I've heard many times, you know, life is fragile, handle with prayer. And it's the truth. Prayer is going to get us through. Prayer is going to take us where we need to be. Listening to the right voices is so important. Satan is an imitator. He's going to try to get you offline. He's going to try to get you off in the wrong direction. And it's so important to spend time, quiet time, with God in prayer so you know what voice you're listening to. Life is fragile. Late night phone calls are rarely bringing good news. I read a story just the other day that spoke exactly to that event. The phone rang in the middle of the night, waking me up from a deep sleep, straddled and groggy. I wondered who would be calling at such an hour of the night. It was a friend who lives in a distant state. 
He said, I've got some bad news. He went on to tell me about a mutual friend who lives several thousand miles away. He was a wonderful minister of the gospel, great man, a tremendous evangelist. He had a massive heart attack. They say the outlook wasn't good. I knew he'd been going through a hard time, but wasn't prepared for this. Last time I saw him, he was upbeat, smiling, positive, future-focused. Now he's in the hospital fighting for his life. The man who called me said, Son, the way of the Lord are sometimes very strange. And indeed they are. So they prayed together. The man pleaded with the Lord's his friend. And he said, But the Lord knows all things and does all things well. And we're trusting in him completely tonight. Read out of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 7 through 12 in the Message Bible. If you only look at us, you might well miss the brightness. We carry this precious message around in unadorned clay pots of our ordinary lives. That's to prevent anyone from confusing God's incomparable power with us. As it is, there's not much of a chance of that. You know for yourselves that we're not much to look at. We've been surrounded and battered by troubles, but we're not demoralized. We're not sure what to do, but we know that God knows what he's doing. We've been spiritually terrorized, but God hasn't left our side. We've been thrown down, but we haven't been broken. What they did to Jesus, they are doing to us. Trial, torture, mockery, murder. And what Jesus did among them, he does in us. He lives. Our lives are at constant risk for Jesus' sake, which makes Jesus' life all the more evident in us. While we're going through the worst, you're getting in on the best. Let's pray. Father, thank you. God, life can sometimes be rough, tough, not easy. Sometimes we wonder. But God, we know you're in control. We know you hold us in the hollow of your hand and you'll never let us go. And Lord, I just ask you now as we go into this time, this word I know you have for us today, you will speak to me, God. I'm your servant. Bring your words. Bring a comfort and a direction and a guidance. We'll give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. The last couple of months have been kind of rough. Been going through some physical things and I think spiritual things. I think there's been a battle going on because God is wanting to do some great things in us and through us. And, you know, I've been thinking a lot about how fragile our life can be. You know, there's a lot of flash flooding going on, tornadoes, a lot of earthquakes in diverse places, a long lost of friends battling a lot of different diseases. And whatever the reason, it's, it, it's good to meditate on our mortality from time to time. We're going to die sooner or later. When Pat Conroy wrote South Abroad, he included the sobering description of how death is woven into our existence from our earliest days. The moment you're born, your death is foretold by your newly minted cells as your mother holds you up, hands you to your father, who gently tickles your stomach where the cancer will maybe someday form. Studies the eyes where melanoma's dark signature is already written along the optic nerves. Touches the back where the liver will maybe some house, someday house cirrhosis. Feels a bloodstream that will sweeten itself into diabetes. Admires the shape of the head where the brain will maybe fall to the axe handle of a stroke. Or listen to your heart, which exhausted by the fearful ways and humiliations and indecencies of life, will explode in your chest like a light going out in the world. Death lives in each of us and begins its countdown on our birthdays and makes its rough entrance in the last hour at the perfect time. In a deep sense, 
We are all born dying. We are born saying hello to the rest of our life. One day it will be a long goodbye. That thought reinforced by late night phone call leads to a deeper truth. The way we respond to the trials of life reveals a great deal about the strength of our Christian faith. We deny our troubles or if we give in to bitterness or anger or if we blame others for our problems, we miss what God intends to teach us through what happens to us. It's a great advance spiritually to be able to say, I believe God has allowed this difficulty for my good and his glory. We are all born dying. In verses 8 and 9, 2 Corinthians 4, Paul makes four statements that describe Christians' response to the trials of life. We've been surrounded and battered by troubles, but we're not demoralized. We're not sure what to do, but we know God knows what to do. We've been spiritually terrorized, but God hasn't left our side. We've been thrown down, but we haven't been broken. These four statements describe the true condition of believers in the world. They're always true. Even though our experience on them varies, we're not always pressured, but often we are. We're not always perplexed, but it happens more than we think. We don't always face opposition, but sometimes we do. And not every day are we struck down by the circumstances of life, but it does happen to us all eventually. No one is exempt from these things. We've been surrounded and battered by troubles, but we're not demoralized. The word surrounded was sometimes used for walking through a crowd where people surround and literally press against you. Or you may think of grapes in a wine press. The pressures of life may squeeze, but we're not utterly crushed. There are some ways this phrase has been translated or paraphrased. We're not always pressured, but often we are. We're pressed on every side by troubles, but we're not crushed. We catch it from every direction. We don't let them squeeze the life out of us. Hard pressed on every side, we're never hemmed in. We're not sure what to do, but we know God knows what he's doing. Sometimes we just don't know which way to go. Life has a way of throwing curveballs down then. Sometimes we face circumstances that are so confusing, we honestly don't know what we need or what we need or what would be best. <laughs> there have been times... When I've said, Lord Jesus, if you were standing here in front of me and said, Keith, what do you want me to do? I wouldn't know what to say. Paul himself said in Romans 8, 26, sometimes we just don't know how to pray. There are moments when the pressure is so great, we're so tired, we're so worn out, life has become so confusing, we honestly don't know what to do or what to say or what to ask. Fatigue wears us all down eventually. Found in those moments, all you can do is cry out, Oh God, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And that's enough. The Lord knows all things. He can fill in all the details. People sometimes ask far more information. You pray more intelligently and all that, but it's not like the Lord needs more information. When we are confused, Jesus is never confused. Sometimes we're perplexed by life. Sometimes we're bewildered and unsure. That's okay. Jesus is in control. He's not going to let go. We're not driven to despair because life doesn't depend on our knowledge of the big picture. <laughs> when we're at our wit's end, God is just getting started. Often it does his best work we are given up completely. We've been spiritually terrorized, but God hasn't left our side. The Greek word translated terrorized, some translations say persecuted, means to pursue as a hunter pursues his game. The word conjures up movie scenes where the hero knows he's being followed wherever he goes, but he just can't quite seem to figure out where the enemies are. They're out there. He knows they're after him. 
when are they going to strike next? Paul knew this from personal experience. Everywhere he went, his Jewish opponents followed him. They stayed on his trail, attacking his character, maligning his preaching, mocking his message, stirring up opposition inside and outside the church. They never gave him a moment's rest. That's why the New Living Translation translates this as we are hunted down. That's how he felt, like an animal, fleeing through the underbrush, the hounds hot on his trail, Bob Jones Jr. was fond of saying, the door of opportunity swings on the hinge of opposition. Opportunity and opposition, they do go together. 1 Corinthians 16, 9, Paul describes a situation like this, a wide door for effective work is open to me, and there are many adversaries. If you set out to do anything good in this world, someone is bound to oppose you. If you decide to devote yourself to the cause of Christ, you can expect that some people close to you will not appreciate your decision. The writer Frederick Buckner was a young man. He attended a pot dinner party on Long Island where his hostess said to him, I understand that you're planning on entering the ministry. <laughs> is this your idea or were you poorly advised? I can remember working and a gentleman, my boss, had a sign on the wall, ordination to another fellowship. And we were sitting talking one day. And he said, and I'll tell you, if anybody tell you being in the ministry is more than a job, they they lying to you. That dude had no idea what a calling was. He was just doing a job. But ministry is a calling that God will never leave us, never forsake us. You've got a calling. Ministry isn't just behind this pulpit. Ministry is outside these four walls, letting people know what God is doing in you and through you. That's ministry. Touching hearts and lives. It doesn't matter where you're at or what you're doing. That's ministry outside these four walls. We're not abandoned by God. We're not deserted and left to stand alone. We're never abandoned to our fate. Recently, I read from a Bible study on the words of Jesus in Matthew 28, 18, and 20, the famous Great Commission where Christ calls his followers to go into all the world and make disciples. It's stated that our problem with that text is that it has been used so many times as a missionary text that we don't hear the great power of Jesus' words. We tend to focus on the command, go into all the world, but that command is bracketed by two powerful statements we often ignore. All authority has been given to me, verse 18, and I am with you always, verse 20. <laughs> it's as if the neighborhood bu bully is challenged us to fight. We're scared to death of what might happen. Then walks up Paul Bunyan, 10 foot tall, arms like tree trunks, Massive chest, rooty cheeks, deep tan, a huge axe in his hands, a smile on his face. Knowing our fear, he simply says, don't worry about anything. I'm going to be with you. If you need me, I'll be there for you. How does that make you feel now? Or imagine somebody, Rick, Donald Trump, saying to you, don't worry about your investment. I've got confidence in you. Even if you mess up, I'll bail you out. I've got more money than you've ever dreamed of. I like you. I'm back in your play. That's a financial term, back in your play. It means a rich person is standing behind you, protecting you from disaster. I'm back in your play. How does that make you feel now? Suddenly your fears will vanish. Bring that back to the words of Jesus. Go into all the world and make disciples. But remember this. You're not going alone. I'm going with you. I'm back in your play. I'm right beside you. You cannot fail. I'm with you wherever you go and whatever you do. 
We often look at the great challenge of reaching the world and think it's impossible. I mean, look at your own street, look at your own neighborhood, your classroom, your office, your store, the company you work at, the people you see every day. How do you reach them? Be yourself. Be yourself. Not in your power, but in his power. But imagine the mighty Son of God saying to you, don't worry, I'm back in your play. When you speak for me, I'll be right there with you. That's a vast promise of the Great Commission. It's not about what we do. It's about what Jesus does. We do the going and telling, but Jesus does everything else. And never left alone. Even when we're rejected, hated, mocked, ridiculed, vilified, the Lord Jesus is right there with us. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego found out when they were thrown in the fiery furnace, Jesus himself is right there with them. We've been thrown down, but we haven't been broken. J.B. Phillips offers this memorable paraphrase, we may be knocked down, but we are never knocked out. If you live long enough, you'll be hit with a sucker putt sooner or later. The term thrown down refers to a sudden emergency, an unforeseen incident, a late night phone call, a crisis that seems to come out of nowhere. The catastrophe that overwhelms us, the earthquake of trouble that rocks our world. Most of us feel like we can handle the moderate trouble. We can handle a cranky boss or sick child or prickly neighbor. We know what to do if we have a fender bender or when electricity goes off. We can skimp for a few days when the money is tight. And we know when we're sick enough, we need to go see the doctor. Because we know that in each life, some rain must fall. We know where to find the umbrella when the dark clouds start gathering. But what will you do when the rain becomes a thunderstorm? Or what are you going to do when that thunderstorm becomes a flash flood or a thousand-year flood? What then? Mike Tyson famously remarked, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. If you live long enough, you'll be punched in the mouth more than once. Sometimes you'll see the blow coming. More often than it seems, it comes out of nowhere. What happens to others is going to happen to us sometime or another. It's a big mistake to think God promises to shield his children from the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. What happens to others happens to us. We get sick, our children get sick, get laid off, chemo doesn't work. There's always a way out. More and more unconvinced that our just apologetic to the world is not some clever argument. We must prove that Jesus really rose from the dead. Clever arguments can only take you so far. Our friends will judge our Christianity, mostly how we respond when we take it to the chin. Tim Keller says we need a theology of suffering. If we're going to reach this generation, Christians are truly the light of the world, then the light most likely to be, when is the light most likely to be seen? In the bright sun of the midday or the darkness of the night? The answer is obvious. It's not as if we can choose. We are the light of the world 24 hours a day. But our testimony given in the midst of a hardship and sorrow will resonate more loudly because it comes at midnight. Anyone can sing when the sun is shining. You can still sing at midnight. The world will hear you in a different way. And that is nitty-gritty realism. I love the nitty-gritty realism of this passage. Are we under pressure? Absolutely. Do we get confused sometimes? You better believe it. Do we face harsh criticism every day? Are we knocked down sometimes? Yes, we are. That's life. That's reality. That's the truth for every follower of Jesus. 
you thought anything different, you better go back to your recruiting officer <laughs> and have a chat with whoever signed you up because being a Christian doesn't mean getting a free pass through life. Far from it. Christ offers victory through trouble, not victory apart from trouble. J. Philip Arthur summarizes the meaning of her text. Taken together, these four images tell us that Paul was a hard-headed realist with no romantic illusions about his service for God. Far from depicting himself as a spiritual superhero blazing a trail of success like a comet across the first century sky, Paul portrayed himself as a groggy fighter reeling from a succession of near-lethal blows surprised to find himself still on his feet and sure that if he was still standing, it was only by the God's grace. What does that mean for us? We talk a lot about victorious Christian living, and I'm all for that as long as the victory is the same way Paul did. Sometimes I hear people talk about victory. It sounds like they want some sort of experience that will deliver them from the trials and struggles of life. They want to be lifted to a higher plane and a higher life that will persevere them from trouble. It doesn't work that way. Too many Christians want life to be like the Pirates of Caribbean right at Disney World. <laughs> you float along in a little boat, and you see the menacing pirates and their sharp swords, and it seems like they're going to get you, but they never come close. You have a thrill ride, but you're never really in danger. Life isn't that way. Life sometimes is hard. We face danger around every corner. Paul's view of victory means, yes, I face trouble every day. Sometimes I despair my own life. I'm under pressure all the time. I get confused. People attack me. Sometimes I get knocked down by life. But that's when the power of Christ shows up to help. This isn't a cafeteria. We don't get to choose our troubles. It's not as if we can say, I'll take some light tribulation and uh, let's hold off on the persecution. If you don't mind, I, I think I'll skip that part about being knocked down. But life isn't a cafeteria where we can pick what happens to us. We take what God sends us, but by grace, though we are knocked down, we are never knocked out. The many dangers and toils and snares have already come. His grace has brought me safe thus far. His grace will lead me home. So what can you expect as a Christian who lives in this world? Well, when you say like Jimmy Stewart, it's a wonderful life, but it's not an easy life. If you follow Jesus, you're going to face some suffering, some troubles, trials, perplexity. Sometimes you'll feel backed in the corner. Sometimes you may think God has forgotten you, but hang on. Hang on. You'll see God's power at work. Though you are broken out, broken life, out of your brokenness will come the fragrance of Jesus Christ himself. Oh, run to the cross. Run to the cross. You smell beautiful. Lord Jesus will be glorified by the way you respond to your trials. What about the friend who was hanging on to life at that moment? They'd been truly knocked down, but it's equally true that they weren't knocked out. They're clinging to Jesus even as they cling to life itself. As they pray for their complete recovery, they do not fear for their friend because years ago they placed a life in the hands of Jesus Christ and the Lord will take good care of them. Same is true for us who believe in Jesus. Do you know him? Are you trusting him? He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. You put his, your life in his hand. You'll be protected. You'll have trials. You'll have troubles. But he's there to help. Perhaps the Lord is using the hardships of your life to draw you closer to him. My advice is very simple. Run to the cross. Run to the cross and lay hold of Jesus Christ. 
He loved you. He gave himself for you. Trust him completely. And for all who do know him, trust in this truth. Whether we live, whether we die, no matter what happens tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, we need not be afraid. You may live another 50 years or you may die in the next 24 hours. In the ultimate sense, it doesn't matter for all things are in the Father's hand. No man need fear the, the years for they are bringing him nearer, not to death, but to God. So says William Barclay, if we know Jesus, we're in great shape today, tomorrow, and forever. There's no need to fear. Hey, we're going to have troubles. Life isn't easy. Handle, <laughs> handle with prayer. Because there's going to be bumps. There's going to be troubles. There's going to be people that you think are there to help and sometimes be a hindrance. And like I said earlier, be careful to listen to the right voices. Oh, spend time. Listen to the Father. Spend time. He loves to hear you, and he loves when you listen. It's not an easy life. But hey, the benefits outweigh everything that comes to us. We have a heavenly home. Jesus went to prepare a place, a mansion. The only thing man made in heaven are the nail scars in his hands and feet. He took it for you. Father, I thank you and praise you, God. Thank you, Father, for we know life gets tough. We have trials, we have problems but you help us through them. Jesus came to show, live the perfect life. He's our redeemer. He's our kinsman. He saves us and sets us free. Though we have trials, we have troubles. We know you're there with us. You hold us closely. Never let us go. And God, if anybody watching or is here today and they don't know your love and your mercy and your grace, I ask you, Father, to speak into their hearts and lives and make that surrender. Call on the name of Jesus. Acknowledge him as Savior. Believe in your heart. God is raising from the dead and you will be saved. So simple. So simple. God has made it so simple. And Father, I thank you and praise you for the wonderful things you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you all for coming out tonight. It's been a great day. It's been a beautiful day. I so appreciate you being here, watching online. Hey, greater days are coming. And hold on. Keep looking up. God will see us through. Life isn't easy. Handle with prayer. Have a great week. We'll be here Wednesday. Ladies Prayer Tuesday. Be blessed. You're a blessing. <laughs>